Political dynasties are part of our history and our culture. But could dynasties be keeping the Philippines from achieving its full potential? The following are five points on political dynasties in the Philippines. First, let's define dynasty as a family that has several members in elected government positions. Famous examples of political dynasties include the Lees from Singapore, the Duvaliers of Haiti, the Jongs of North Korea, the Gandhis of India, and the Kennedys and the Bushes from the United States of America. In the U.S., political dynasties comprise about 6% of its legislators, while in the Philippines, dynasties make up a staggering 70% of the 15th Congress, excluding the Senate. In the Philippines, a few from a long list include the Aquinos, the Marcoses, and the Arroyos. Dynasties in Congress also dominate the major political parties. How do political families or dynasties affect governments and economies, especially in democratic countries? Lee Kuan Yew is one of the world's longest-serving leaders. As Singapore's Prime Minister from 1959 to 1990 and Senior Minister and Minister Mentor until 2011. When his son eventually took over leadership in 2004, Singapore remained a wealthy country despite recent economic challenges. A more adverse view is the stationary bandit where dynasties guarantee their constituents a certain level of development if only to ensure their continued political survival. In the Philippines, the Constitution expressly prohibits political dynasties, as may be defined by law. However, numerous attempts at actually crafting an anti-dynasty bill have been met with either indifference or strong opposition. According to their statements of assets, liabilities, and net worth, members of Congress that were elected in 2007 and were re-elected in 2010 became richer by an average margin of 39%. And yet, poverty levels barely moved. And according to an SWS survey, incidences of hunger have actually increased in the same time period. Put together, we have this. While there is nothing wrong with becoming richer, the data begs the question, are these representatives doing everything in their power to uplift their poor constituents? Evidence reveals that dynastic representatives tend to spend on scholarships and livelihood projects, programs that enable them to get direct credit. Tarpaulin politics appear to directly benefit those in power through increased name and face recall. Unfortunately, the costs associated with tarpaulin politics are often paid for with taxpayer money. Winning in elections encourages this practice as dynastic politicians gain at least a 5% winning advantage over non-dynastic politicians. One advantage non-dynastic politicians appear to have is that, on the average, they have more personal funds to draw from for their campaign. Until, of course, you remove a certain billionaire boxer turned public servant from the equation. As the country heads to another election year, Everyone is challenged to be more critical and to demand more from their candidates. Do the political dynasties running for office have a long runway in their minds or are they just stationary bandits? Or can voters perhaps go beyond name recall and familiarity and instead choose candidates on the basis of their track records and the ideals that they stand for?
power and responsibility are in your hands. For more information about this topic, read An Empirical Analysis of Political Dynasties in the 15th Philippine Congress 